In this video, I'm going to show you how to diagnose the problem when your air compressor will not start. And for the example, I'll be using my 29-gallon Harbor Freight air compressor because it broke yesterday and today I fixed it. But these same steps will work on pretty much any compressor, especially ones with a belt drive. When I made a video about this air compressor not starting yesterday, some of you said the problem was that I bought an air compressor from Harbor Freight. That's fair, uh, but other people had some pretty good ideas, including checking the caps in the motor, checking the unloader valve, and checking the pressure switch. The first thing to check is something physically stopping the pump or the motor from being able to turn. I can see that there's plenty of oil in the pump. It's not full of metal chunks. I was able to turn the flywheel, so it looked like both the pump and the motor were intact physically. Another thing some people suggested is that the check valve in the tank or the unloader valve might have failed. If either of those had failed, what that can do is let pressurized air stay in the head of the pump. That makes it very hard for the pump to start turning and it can cause the problem I was experiencing. So here's what I did to check it. The unloader valve physically seems to be moving fine, so I thought that was probably okay. The check valve in the tank is right here. So I disconnected the tube to the unloader valve because this leads down to the tank check valve. If that valve was stuck open, there would be pressurized air from the tank coming out of here, and there's not, so it looks like both of those are fine. The next stop was the motor. Uh, one thing I like about this compressor is it has a name brand Marathon motor. Actually looking at the motor, the circuit breaker was not tripped. I took off the capacitor covers. Uh, since this is a name brand motor, I was happy to see a name brand run capacitor. The start capacitor is not as nice, but it's not totally generic either. So what I did was use my multimeter, which has a capacitor testing function, to check the capacitors, and they both seemed okay. It was starting to look more and more like it was a problem in the wiring or in the pressure switch. Obviously the compressor is unplugged right now. You don't want to be poking around in here when it's energized. I was checking the continuity inside the switch and between the switch and the motor, and I found some issues. As I was looking around at the switch, I noticed there's two sets of contacts, one here and one on the other side, and the ones right here were very corroded, black, and dirty. So I got in there with some sandpaper and a screwdriver and cleaned them up a little bit. After cleaning up that contact and reassembling everything, it works. The only thing left is that the problem with the switch caused the hour meter to run continuously. So it says 92 hours, but I actually only have about 25 hours on it. So I have a high-tech solution. I made a note on there saying it's 70 hours too much. I am disappointed that this stopped working after only 25 hours of use, but it was a pretty easy fix. And the more that I have poked around in this compressor, I'm impressed with the quality of the motor. It seems to have a solid pump, but they did cheap out on the pressure switch. When I was in there, it's pretty cheap and flimsy. So replacing this down the road with a better quality one might be a good idea. I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching.